thrown off for a couple of reasons. One, because of President or Veterans Day, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna extend it uh, because of Veterans Day and also because of Tuesday. that 
part of the accountability also for you guys not being here on Tuesday is you guys figuring out what you guys should do to make up for not being here on Tuesday, in addition to having a class to make up for not being here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because what we're talking about is choices and consequences, or decision making and consequences. So you guys made the choice not to do your work. You guys made the choice not to show up. So there's a consequence for not doing your work and there's a consequence for not showing up. For me not to make sure that that happens is um, hypocritical of what I'm trying to share with you guys as far as this program goes. So that, does that make sense? Okay. So for me not to give you guys consequences um, for the choices that you guys made leading up to today, I shouldn't even be here if I don't do that, right? Because I'm teaching you guys decision making and consequences, right? Okay. So I want you guys to talk amongst yourself and, and come up with something and tell me how you guys think, um, what you guys think the consequences should be for the stuff that you guys didn't complete and for not being here on Tuesday. So take about five minutes to talk about that and figure that out. And I don't want you guys to be BSing and messing around and playing games and stuff like that. I want you guys to really talk about this because this right here is a very small reflection of what you guys do outside of here. Okay? You guys don't take stuff serious, you guys mess around, you guys are playing with your life. And for you guys not to write out your timeline for what you guys have gone through is a reflection of you guys not really taking stuff real serious. Okay? I'm having a difficult time figuring out a consequence for a class like this. Why? Whatever you want to call this. So Why? There's, no, no. Because there's a... Uh, Actually, okay. Okay, tell me why. I, I mean, I think... Well, well, maybe, maybe, it's it's maybe, it's maybe it's you, but if Greg was up there, he could threaten us with stuff because he has our scholarship and stuff like that. But he was a teacher for us right here. Um, because it's because like we're not truly. Uh, I don't have it. He doesn't have it invested in it. Yeah. He has nothing invested in it. He okay. doesn't, or he doesn't see what. Like it's not material, I guess you could say. Yeah. That's a good word. Okay. So he doesn't see. You no, know, he's not got a scholarship writing on it, or right. just yeah. playing time writing on it. I'm trying to. I'm just checking it. 
vested so vested interests. Okay, so 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 there are a couple of things. One, vested interests. Okay. Two, um, seriousness. Maybe. Maybe. Well, that's the. I mean, that goes along with that. Like, it's not. It's not like he's paying for it. So. Okay. He doesn't feel. Like so, so because there is no vested interest, because there's very little value. Okay. Um, you know, there's, there's probably probably can't really think of anything. Um, the threat. The to, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what kinds of threats? How are you going to function? Yeah, and yeah. Like I'm, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. Right. And like I don't see how you really can. Is there anything you try to make us do? We could just blow off and not do it. Uh, but I, like on that, I get. I'm talking to Greg. If you don't show up, he's going to start taking your scholarship, all of it. He said he'll. Do. If you don't show up, he'll take all of it, not a portion of it. He'll take all of it. So I mean, but why would why would someone even have to make that threat? Like I don't know. To you know, to, okay. So so here's my here's, here's here's a couple of questions for you guys. It's like a just like a lack of maturity. A couple of questions. How many of you guys consider yourselves to be adults? Okay. So only two people don't consider them. Did you raise your hand? <coughs> only three out of the. Two, four, uh, five, eight people in here. Three of you guys don't consider yourselves to be adults. Why is that? Well, for me, I don't really have a, like most of the things that I do aren't really out of my own interest. It's basically out of other, like I'm here at school because of like what my father wants, what my dad is really good want. Okay. For me, otherwise I think I would just, yeah, I'm doing something else. Okay. What would you be out doing? Probably playing soccer just like I know I'm a good job. Okay. <clears throat> Why don't you do that? Like, stop going to school and stuff? Yeah. Because then all right. my dad gets on my ass for it. Why don't you move? move it. It's also something I don't want to deal with. What's that? Like, a good like family. You know? Like, if I'm not there, like if I'm not doing what my dad wants me to do, he's going to get me for it. Why don't and you move? Yeah, I know. But I'm getting that. Like if I do decide to move, like it's still going to make like poorly on my parents, like, like what they want. And it's still that sort of guilt. You know? I don't know. Because let me let me give you a hard reality. A, a, a really hard dose of reality. A big, a big swallow of reality, okay? <clears throat> If this really wasn't what you wanted, and you really wanted to be on your own, you would say, bye mom, bye dad, I'm an adult, I'm leaving. I just like, that. yeah, I absolutely agree. But you won't because you still want to be a child. Okay, so so let's let's get, so, so where I'm going with this is, we're getting back to the heart of this class, which is your choices, your consequences, your decision making, and the, and, and the consequences associated with those decisions. You still want to be a child, and you fear being out on your own, but you use mom and dad as a crutch to allow yourself to stay at home and, and, and say, well, if I go ahead and I, and, I, and, I, and I move out, well, see, what'll happen is, you know, there'll be some, a little bit of disappointment there, and, and you know, all that stuff. That's, that's, that's BS. If you want to be a man, be a man. Leave home. You don't have to be home. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do once you turn 18. Once you turn 18, you can step out into the real world and say, I'm going for mine now. Your parents' responsibility for you is only up until the age of 18 or until you graduate from high school. After that, it's bye-bye birdie. You can start going and, and going for yours, okay? But the fear of being a man, I, I've been there. That's why this program is so important to me. Because I know what it's like to be scared to, to step out into the world by yourself and take on the world by yourself. And nobody's ready for that. And I want to, and see, there's all these tools out here in the world to fix stuff. But there was no tool to fix people's decision making ability. So I created my own tool so that I could share it with you guys so that you guys could fix all of your inability to be good decision makers. Because I don't know that any of you have gotten to the point yet that you can make good choices. Okay? 
So all the nice guy stuff that I did the first couple of weeks, that's all out the window. The reason why it's out the window is because I can't, I can't allow you guys the, 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 the flexibility and the freedom um, uh, to, to come and go as you choose. So now, remember when we first started, I said I'll manage you guys as I need to. You guys remember me saying that? Well, now I really got to be hands-on. I got to be more like a dad to you guys now because you guys don't have the ability to make the choices on your own. Okay, so now I gotta start helping you guys with the, with the consequences and the accountability and all that stuff because you guys can't do it yourself. So now I gotta be that, that, you know, that guy that, that nobody really wants to deal with unless they really have to, okay? But I don't mind playing that role because everybody has to be managed differently. I'm not gonna treat all you guys like that, but the people that need to be, it's like, it's like, raising, it's like raising kids. Every kid that's in a house and grows up in a home, they can't be raised the same way because every kid is not the exact same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna respect you guys individually. I'm absolutely gonna do that. But now I gotta be really tough on you guys because you guys can't handle it on your own, okay? So, got a couple of others. How come you guys don't see yourselves as adults? Uh, uh, basically, because I just I I just know that I'm not uh, an adult, yet, you know. Well, Why? I am like, but I feel that right now I'm like I try. I mean, I try to be an adult. Mm -hmm. Like I try to put myself in a place where, all right, what if I had a family? What if I, you know, all those stuff? And I feel like right now I'm just I'm just practicing it, mm -hmm. but I'm not I'm not in like the real action. One thing we need to start doing, guys, is we got to get away from ambiguous words. You guys know what ambiguous means? Vague. Vague. So the word that you use that was very ambiguous is I try to be an adult. Either you are or you aren't. There's no such thing as try. Either you are doing something or you're not doing something. Okay? So <clears throat> that's the first thing. There is no practice. You got the practice whenever you were growing up. That's where the practice comes from. There are certain things that you can take away, and we talked about this very early when we first met. Athletics, sports, and all that stuff is a reflection of what goes on in society. It's a reflection of the real world. Um, in addition, there are lots of life lessons that are associated with being an athlete and playing a sport. Teamwork, sacrifice, hard work, um, accountability, um, fighting, fighting through, I don't mean like fighting, but I'm talking about fighting through something. When you don't feel like it, when you feel like giving up, when you don't think that you have any more left, you always have to give a little bit more, okay? Those are the lessons that can, that, 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 that are associated with playing a team sport, but all those lessons aren't always learned in team sports if they're never really spoken of and brought to your attention and really talked about, okay? This is why sports is such a, such a wonderful thing. This is why, for me, this is why everybody should be talking about life skills in sports. Because life skills is something that can't be taught. I can't think of anywhere else. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, your life skill goes with you. Walking down the street, in the workplace, at school, at home, at church, um, with your girlfriend, away from your girlfriend, all that stuff. Life skills associated with all the things that I just, that I just described. Okay? And those life skills can be acquired in the sports world. I'm not sure that that can happen anywhere else. Are you? Can you guys come up with any other place where that might happen? Where you can understand hard work, sacrifice, teamwork, um, um, not quitting, not giving up, um, developing work ethic and all that stuff, having a winning attitude, being able to depend on other people. Can you think of where you can get all that stuff somewhere else? The Army. Maybe the Army. Maybe the Army. Anybody interested in enlisting in the Army? Maybe, possibly, okay. 
take advantage of the opportunities that you guys have before you. We take stuff for granted. We, I'm including myself. But you guys have an opportunity to learn these life skills. Let me ask this question before I make an assumption. Do you guys like playing soccer? Love it, love it. I got a like it and a love it from a couple of people. Okay? So everybody that didn't say like it or love it, you probably don't really enjoy it. I got a feeling. And you're just here just taking up space. I don't, it's just that I don't have a word for it. You know, I love it so much that I can't say nothing. Okay? Leave some of you speechless. Yeah. Don't even know how to describe it, the way that you feel about soccer. Okay? Don't take up space, fellas. Don't go through life taking up space. Nobody likes, you know the difference between a pond and a river? You all know that it's at least water, right? A pond just sits there. A pond just sits there. What's a river do? It flows because it has what? And what else does it have? Potential. Not only does it have potential, but it has life. It's constantly moving, constantly coming and going, constantly on the move. A pond, it just sits there and it just takes up space. It's cute. Is that what you want to do? You want to be a pond and just be cute? Don't be a pond and just be cute. Don't just take up space. Have life. Flow. Back and forth. Have some worth. A pond isn't really worth a whole lot. It's dead. It has no life. Is that what you want to be? Just a lifeless body of water? Does any of, is any of this making sense? Yeah. Because that's what I'm getting right now. I'm getting from you guys that you want to go through life just existing. You don't really want to live. And you're here just, because, just to take up some space. Nobody wants to deal with people who want to just take up space. I know I don't. It's a complete utter waste of my time. And I don't want to, I don't want to have my time wasted. That's why I told you guys before we, the very first time that I met you guys, and I, every time, I always have to, at the, end of, at the end of every time we meet, I always say thank you for your time. And, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you why here in a second, why I say thank you for your time. What's the most valuable thing that you guys own? Why? Why isn't it your, why isn't it your, your mother? Why isn't it your father? Why isn't it your house? Why isn't it that? Why isn't it your siblings? How come that's not the most valuable thing to you guys? Don't say time just because we just got done, I just got done talking about it. Why is that? Why is time the most valuable thing that you own? <coughs> Why isn't it your mother or your, or your siblings? Anybody? There's no right or wrong answer. You can say that I'm clueless. I don't know. Clueless. Okay. Nobody knows. Our parents do have value. Our siblings do have value. But it only has value if you're able to spend time with those loved ones. That's why time is the most valuable thing that you own. The house that you may own or the house that you'll eventually own, the value that it has is the time that you're able to spend in it. The kid that I have, he only has value if I'm able to spend time with him. Now he has value away from me, but the value, my personal value, the value that I have for my own kid, it's only valuable if I'm able to spend time with my kid. Does that make sense? And just like you said, you can't get it back. And so I don't want to waste my time with you guys. If you guys aren't really going to see yourselves as more than just a bunch of folks that's just taking up space. Because I could be with my son right now. Okay? That's where I could be. And some of you might even say, well, hell, leave. We don't want you here. I'm okay with that. Say it. I respect someone that speaks their mind. Because now we can really start to interact and engage with each other. And you guys don't have to pretend and be fake with me. I said I would never do that to you, and I don't want you guys to do that to me. 
Okay? So here's what I want from you guys. I want you guys to have, to, to, to value the time that you guys have. Okay? Value that time. It should mean something to you. Okay? Back to how we got into that. All the practice that you need, you can learn in terms of being an adult. You can learn it playing soccer. So you can start figuring it out right now. You don't have to be scared, and you don't have to try to practice it, being an adult, because you can do it right now. And you did it before. But I don't think that you were able to associate how playing a simple sport like soccer and doing something that's so much fun and something that you really enjoy, I don't think you really saw how you could get adult-like uh, or adult-like training out of playing soccer and the value of life skills out of playing soccer. Probably didn't think about that, did you, before? Yeah, I did. Okay? I did. Okay? So did you think that you were practicing that whenever you were playing soccer? Yeah, I always took a look, I always took a look at the different things I was doing, like teamwork and all that stuff you said. Mm -hmm. I thought a lot of it. Okay? Sacrificing. Because I was told to be that way. Okay? Sacrificing. Working really hard. Because that's all you're going to continue to do. You're just not going to do it. You may, oh, I'm not going to say that. You may not do it playing soccer, but you'll continue to work hard. You'll continue to sacrifice. It'll just be in a different area of your life. It may not be in soccer. It'll just be in another area of your life. Does that make sense? Okay? How come you don't feel like you're an adult? You raise your hand. Who didn't raise your hand? Okay. So, for you guys that do think uh, see yourselves as adults, do you want to be treated like adults? Yes. You want to be treated like adults. Okay. Everybody wants to be treated like an adult, but it's your actions that allow people to treat you like an adult. The reason why people end up getting micromanaged and different things like that is because their behaviors are not a reflection of the way that an adult should, should conduct themselves, or present themselves, or represent themselves. And until you all begin to um, uh, display adult-like behaviors, people will continue to treat you guys like children. I don't want to treat you guys like children. I don't want to sit here and have this speech with you guys. I will if you guys need that type of encouragement. But that's not how I want to engage with you guys. It's too much information to cover, and we only have a month to cover it. So we don't even have a lot of time to really get everything that I really want to talk about. I have to pick and choose from the program what I have to talk to you guys about because it's only a month to do it. But now I've got to waste time talking about stuff like this because nobody wants to show up on Tuesday and because nobody wants to do their timeline. This is a complete waste of time. I'm available to even do one-on-one -on -one counseling with you guys or consulting with you guys. So this is the type of stuff that we can talk about on our own time, but now I've got to waste other people's time who did decide to show up on Tuesday, who did do their timeline, who was ready to attend class, and now I've got to waste this man's time because not everybody wanted to show up and do the work. It's not fair to him. That's not fair to the other couple of guys who was here on Tuesday. Okay? So that's somewhat disrespectful to him. Okay? And he should all be kicking you guys in the butt for doing that. Okay? Because when, when, when we were playing ball, when I was playing ball, our team held each other accountable. It wasn't our coaches. Our coaches didn't have to threaten us. We manned our locker room. Okay? And we knew when to play, and we knew when to, and when to be, be serious. And we held each other accountable. And you talk about fun? You talk about the type of fun that we had, and the type of fun that we had, and the type of fun that we continue to have? I just got off the phone with my coaches because I called a kid that I know, or I called my coaches for a kid that I know who doesn't, who, who, who doesn't want to be in junior college anymore. And he's ready to go on to a university. And he's a baller. And I called the coaches. And I told them about it. And you know, we didn't even really get to talk about him very much. You know what we talked about? All the guys that came back last week for a big game that, that, that they had last weekend. And how some of the guys that I played with, one of them was a guest speaker for the game. 
and how the night before they all got together about the, in the entire defensive line and how they hung out and stayed up all night. That's what I talked to my coaches about. That's how close we were. That's how we held each other accountable. People traveling from out of town to come in for a game. People getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, into the college and stuff like that. That's the type of stuff that we talk about. That's the kind of relationship that you guys can have here, but you guys don't know how to have that. And I'm trying to get you guys to the point that you can have those kinds of relationships, but I don't, I don't know that you guys are really, really understand the value of it. We were created to have relationships with each other, relationships with people. Because more than anything, under this big, uh, big, big wall that you guys have, more than anything, you guys just want to be accepted by each other. You guys want to hang around each other. You guys enjoy each other. You guys share some of the same interests. And all you guys want to do is just have fun. But just like that light switch, it's got to be turned on and it's got to be turned off. And you guys control that switch. Start establishing relationships with each other. Hold each other accountable. When it's time to be serious, I think, I think much more of you, if you guys are sitting in this class, and one of you guys seriously says, not saying it so I can hear it, but somebody seriously says to somebody, I'm trying to pay attention, shut up. That's what a man would do. I'm trying to get something out of this, shut up. I'm trying to get something out of this, I don't want to see what you're drawing on your cup. I don't have time for that right now. We can do this afterwards. This ain't time to play games. That's what men do. They know when to turn it on and they know when to turn it off. That's called man enough. That's called letting your nuts hang, okay? That's what you guys need to be doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I don't wanna waste time doing this again. Okay? I wanna cover the material. That's what I want to do. So here's the solution. You got to take responsibility for your actions. You got to hold each other accountable, and you got to embrace the ideology of the two. Of the two. Responsibility and accountability. You got to make it make both of them a part of your lifestyle. And you gotta do it with conviction. <clears throat> Here's an example of what I just got done talking about. That's not anything that I see. What I see from you and what I hear from you is a manifestation of what's going on on the inside of you. You say you wanna be men, you say you wanna be treated like adults, but that's not what I see reflected. What I see on the outside is a manifestation of what's going on on the inside. Childlike behaviors is what I see. You're, acting, you're probably a child mentally and emotionally. So until I start seeing you guys conduct yourselves as an adult and talking like adults and behaving like adults, that's when I'll know that you're an adult on the inside. That's when I'll know that you're mature enough mentally and mature enough emotionally. Manifestation. Let's see it on the outside. One thing that my ex-wife told me, she said, Daniel, love, I don't want to hear. She said, love is an action. Love is an action. Didn't understand it at the time. Totally understand it now. Leadership. Leadership. Technically, the word leadership is a what? A noun, a verb, or what? You guys know what a noun and a verb is, right? No. Yeah. A noun is a person, a place, or a thing. Okay? A verb is an, is an, is an action. Okay? So is, is leadership technically a noun or a verb? Or, or leader. Is, is, is leader technically a noun or a verb? No. Technically it's a noun. However, leader, just like love, is, a, is, is an action. It's an action. So yes, it would be described technically as a noun, but it should really be a verb. Because great leaders lead by example. 
It's something that you do. It's not just a title that you get. So is anybody in here the captain of the team? Anybody in here a captain? You should have more responsibility than anybody else. Everything that you do, everybody should be watching it. Because they're, they're watching it to see how's our captain going to present himself? How's he going to conduct himself? Can he really hold that title? You have to earn the right to be considered a leader in life. You have to earn the right to be a captain. It's just not something that you just get, um, a, a label that you're just able to receive just because you're the best player on the team. Your actions have to show um, leadership, have to show signs of leadership in order to be voted captain. So I'm hoping that if there are any freshmen in here, I'm hoping next year's captain won't be based on your skill set, but based on the behaviors associated with leadership. So when you vote for captains, it's not the guy that's the coolest guy on the team. It's not the guy that has the best soccer skills on the team, but it's the guy that's always early, leaves later than everybody else, always shows up to every soccer-related function, always knows how to conduct himself and present himself. That's what a captain is. That's what a leader is. And typically, if you're, if you're a leader in a sport, you can typically you end up being a leader in life. The reality is, all of us were called to be leaders, and we talked about that a little bit already, the very first time that we met. We already talked about that a little bit. All of you guys were called to be leaders. Now here's a problem. If you never embrace the ideology of taking responsibility for your actions and establishing a standard that includes accountability, no one will ever be able to hold you accountable. Order will mean nothing, and there will be a disregard for authority of any kind. Just based on the fact that I'm taking the time to be here with you, that right there, order will mean nothing to you, and there will be a disregard for authority of any kind. We talked about this last week. What we talked about last week was I asked you guys a simple question. I said, don't you guys think, I can't remember exactly how I said it, but I said, don't you guys think that if somebody worked really hard and was in a position to tell you guys something or give you guys some instruction or something like that, shouldn't you respect that, their authority? And then I said, if you guys were in that position, wouldn't you guys want people to respect the authority that you have? What did everybody say? Yeah. Everybody said yes. Just based on what I've been able to do, you should respect the fact that you should be here just because I'm asking you to be here. Coach shouldn't even have to threaten you for taking your scholarship for you guys to show up. Does that make sense? Yes. So this, and we covered this last week, this one went in one ear and out the other. You guys haven't begun to embrace this stuff. This is just taking up time for you. You guys are just sitting here. This is, this, is just a, this is just taking up time. Because if it really meant something, if you were really getting something out of it, everybody would be here. At least everybody that heard it would be here. you got to be courageous. you got to have some maturity. You gotta have the courage to do what's right. It's not easy to do what's right. It's not easy at all. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. Otherwise, I wouldn't even have, need to have a job. I wouldn't even have to have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have to like do something else. If it was something that was easy for everybody, if it was easy for everybody to do what's right. But you guys have to stand in the face of adversity. Look adversity in the face. Look at opportunity in the face. Look at these decisions in the face. And you guys have to have the courage to do what's right. You have to have the courage to take responsibility for your actions. And not only that, you've got to begin to start surrounding yourselves with other people that will be willing to do the same. That's what your mother was talking about, your father was talking about when they said, man, be careful when you hang around. Hang around the right people. That's what, that's what they're talking about. You gotta have the courage 
to surround yourself with people that's going to bring out the best in you. If people want to see you act stupid all the time, that's not, that's not somebody that's bringing out the best in you, man. That's just the reality of it. If people want to see you behave immaturely at all times or consistently more often than not, that's a phrase that we'll use um, when we start talking about um, discipline and, uh, and, uh, and goal setting. More often than not. You, you guys know what more often than not means? Okay, so it's, if, it's, if it's seven days in a week, okay, what, what would, of those seven days of, week, of the week, what, what would more often than not represent? What number would that reflect? Four. Four or more. Okay. So if you're doing something, and so, so for example, let's say you guys are going to start journaling or something like that on a regular basis. Or let's say you guys are going to start working out or something like that on a regular basis. Okay. It's seven days in a week. And in order for you guys to, to, to accomplish that new task, if you will, more often than not, you would have to do that at least four, four days a week. Because four days is more often than three days, right? Okay? So if you only did it three days out of the week, that would not be more often, right? Because there's more days that you went that you that you didn't do it than there was that you actually did do it, right? So you guys have to really start taking a look at the people that you hang around with and if they want you to be knuckleheads more often than not you probably need to start severing those ties, okay? There are certain times and certain occurrences that happen, <clears throat> excuse me, that happen with you guys where sometimes ties just need to be severed with people because they just bring you down. You can't, you can't run with people that's just going to bring you down all the time. You got to run with people that's going to bring out the best in you. And if they're bringing out the best in you, then by golly, you better bring out the best in them. You better be making sure that they're as great as they can be as well. You guys have to embrace and internalize a lifestyle that's cons that consists of responsibility, accountability, and you gotta consciously be aware of your surroundings. That's a sure sign of maturity, okay? Simply processing information in this manner is a display of transitioning into adulthood, constantly under construction, and our constant evolution to get better to, and to be better than you were yesterday. Do you guys ever think about whether or not you're a better person from one day to the next? Do you guys really think about that? Not a better soccer player, but a better person. Are you guys constantly trying to like Walk in a direction where you're constantly feeling like you're evolving as a man. Do you guys consciously do that? Okay. Sometimes? Yes. Okay. Once again, going back to the word, more often than not, it has to be more often than not. You guys got to constantly think about the fact that you're evolving as a man and you're getting better as a man. You're becoming better people today than you were yesterday. Okay? And I'm going to give you guys some activities that you'll be able to do to help you guys with that. Okay? That's coming later down the road. Cognitive emotional maturity. <clears throat> Cognitively, we have to align our attitude and our actions or behaviors with what we desire our outcome to be. Okay? So, there's this little cool fancy word that they use, and it's called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when your attitude and your behaviors don't match up with what you want your outcome to be. Okay? But I'm telling you guys right now, in order for you guys to get to where you want to be, you have to think different and you have to behave different. You have to carry yourself different in order for you guys to get the outcomes that you guys want in life. Now you can get a certain outcome if you think a certain way and you behave a certain way and you're going to get that outcome. So if you think negative, if you do things that are going to get you into trouble, then your outcome is going to be trouble. 
thinking positive and doing things and doing positive things, and that's going to give you an outcome, a, a, a more desirable outcome, if you will. Okay? So that's where it starts. Okay? <clears throat> Not settling into the comfort or com into the comfort of conformity. Because that's just the way it is. But that's what we grew up around. Or what we see going on around us. What's that statement mean to you guys? I want you guys to take a minute to think about that statement. Not settling into the comfort of conformity because that's the way it is. But that's what we grew up around. But that's what we see going on around us. We got three, three and three. I want you guys to talk amongst yourselves, pick a representative, and then represent the group right here, okay? Represent the group right here, represent the group, and then that representative is going to talk about it, okay? What's that statement mean to you? You're all highlighted. All right, what you guys got? What you guys, what you come up with?
you know, the, the, the significance behind that statement, okay, from a number of perspectives. So as adults, <laughs> as adults, we shouldn't take, oh, excuse me, as adults, shouldn't we take a stand? You guys say you want to be treated as adults, okay? Shouldn't you take a stand and shouldn't you hold people accountable for foolishness or foolish behavior, okay? And if we're mature adults, how is it that we justify our actions based on what's going on around us or how we grew up? How is that justified? Okay? So I pose this question. When it comes to our emotional maturity as well, our emotional maturity will determine how we engage in our interpersonal relationships. Okay? We need emotional maturity to even allow others to hold us accountable. So when you talk about interpersonal relationships, that means relationships with other people. If you guys are emotionally mature enough, if you guys aren't mentally mature enough, your relationships that you have with other people will, will, will um, they won't be real strong relationships. Um, we talked about this a little bit last week. We talked about um, people that, that had a hard time being held accountable. What's the word? What, what was the phrase? You guys remember the phrase that we use? People's response to something that you, when you say something to them, I don't owe you what? An explanation? I don't have to explain myself to you? Huh? That's the same, yeah. Yeah. Remember we talked about that last week? Okay. So... If you don't have emotional maturity and mental maturity, it'll determine how you engage in other relationships and relationships with other people. Because you won't allow people, if you don't have the maturity, you won't allow people to hold you accountable. It'll never happen. <clears throat> if you have, okay, so here, here's the example. If you have a problem with being put on blast, okay, we hear that statement a lot. Why are you going to put me on blast? Huh? It's not about being put on blast. It's about being held accountable. If you're doing something and you have no business doing it, or it's outside of your character, or it's outside of who you are and what you stand for, then it's, there should be somebody, if, you're, if, you, if, if you guys are really good friends, that's going to say to you, well, that was, that was kind of outside of what you normally do. Is everything okay? It's a pretty good indication if somebody gets outside of their character that there's something going on. Okay, and I'll give you guys an example of that a little later. Uh, or how will you handle it if your peers call you out? That's a sign of emotional maturity. If you get caught out, how will you handle it? How will you feel if you're called, called out on the field, on the soccer field? Okay. Is it fair to say that a person has to earn the right to do that? What do you mean called out? Like if, if if you like, you know, aren't really giving your best effort on the on the soccer field or you're laxing or you know, you don't you know you um, care give your best time. effort. Yeah, if you don't give your best effort to go get a ball or, or something like that or to chase somebody down or chase down a ball and, and, and one of your teammates come up to you and it's like you know, yells, you know, everybody's a little bit emotional during a, um, during, during a sporting event because everybody should be competing as hard as they can. And if that's the case, based on the, um, making an attempt to compete as hard as you can, based on the emotion associated with that, somebody's not going to come up to you and say, I really wish that you would have ran a little harder to get that wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not going to happen. That's what they wanted to say. That's not going to happen. They're going to be emotional. They're going to come up to you and they're going to be like, Get the ball! Is that the best you can do? Right? Or worse, okay? People, um, people should people should have to earn the right to be able to do that. You guys feel that way? Yell someone else? Absolutely. Yeah, people should yell. Yeah. People should have to earn the right to yell, right? And it's on on the field. If you say like, I this is just me. I don't know how you everybody else. You say you love the sport. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think you should take anything personal. 
Especially in the case. I agree. Like, if you can't, like, I, I, I agree. You definitely should. If someone's going to be called out, I don't think just a captain. I'll just say someone too. Like, I think everybody has the right yeah, to call I totally agree. Yeah. I totally everybody agree. Right. Right. I totally agree. If I feel that Miguel's not giving 100%, I don't think just because I'm a captain, I should the only one to tell him. I Absolutely. Every, anybody has the right. Anyway. Absolutely. Not That's Absolutely. What I, I totally agree. But when you heard I think when it gets to a point where the other team and people are other spectators are like, damn. That's, that guy happens to us all the time. I'll, I'll say it straight up. Like, damn, other teams are like, damn. He's fucking yelling at him. Like, yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I told I even told the coaches because I, like, and I think Rob caught himself a couple of times too. I'm not trying to call you out, Rob, but I think he caught himself a couple of times too. And, Coach is like, no, it's all it's not personal. I'm like, no, I'm not taking personal. Ever since last year, when a coach wants something, it's all business. I'm, it just stuck in my head. I'm like, it's all business. Right. Like, right. Everything here is just business. Right. But it's, I think it's a different way. Right. By my no disrespect. Dang, what the fuck were you thinking right there? Right. It says, like, yo, right there? Right. Don't do that again. Right. Turn simple. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, That's just what I think. Okay. How you talk to me. Because if you're, if you're a captain in whatever sport or team, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're the leader. Mm -hmm. You have that team on your back. Right. And you're supposed to be showing what kind of team you you have. Right. To other people and to other coaches and to right. other spectators. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Well, but, I also think you should be able to earn it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's earning. You can't just give it to you. Because if, if you yell at somebody and then, like, later on come the same play and you don't do nothing about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and, and, and fellas, and, and that's where I'm going with this is, you guys, everybody in here should be able to yell at everybody in here. Nobody should be exempt from not being yelled at, and there's nobody in here that should not be able to yell at somebody else, okay? Once again, going back to actions, your actions speak louder than words. You gotta earn a right to be able to do it, man. So everybody should be working as hard as they can because when the time comes, and you're, you're put in a position to where you have to hold somebody accountable and, 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 and if they don't see, and forget about their opinion, if you haven't been doing everything necessary um, to earn the right to be able to hold somebody accountable, and somebody can, can literally and honestly say, well, you don't work very hard, they got a right to, to come back with that response. But if every, every single person in here is working as hard as they can every day, um, doing everything necessary to put yourself in a position to be successful on the soccer field, in the classroom, being good decision makers, all that stuff's out the window, man. Out the window from the standpoint of they have earned the right to be able to hold you accountable on the field. Okay? And you guys have to do that. You guys have to work hard all the time. Okay? But it also trans translates and transfers also into your personal relationships. Your relationships away from the soccer field. It's the same way. So, the things that are necessary to get to the point where you can or, or, or where you do earn the right to be able to do those things. So, everybody agrees that you have to earn the right? What I want you guys to do now is I want you guys to come up with what's necessary to earn the right to be able to do that. So collectively, everybody's going to need to get out some paper. Everybody's going to need something to write with. And I want you guys to all write down, because at the end, what we're going to end up doing is writing down everything that you need to do to be held accountable. Everything that you need to do so that you can, when you're out, out on the field, you can encourage your teammate, you can hold your teammate accountable, you can say to them you gotta go harder, and all that, okay? But you guys are gonna start out in groups, the same groups, so three there, three there in the front, three in the back, and then three in the back on that side. Yes.
So everything from, you know, I'll give you guys a couple of examples. Everything from not missing practices, not missing your workouts, doing your runs, not slacking when you do your runs, um, you know, stuff like that. That's the stuff that gives you that allows you guys to interact. Because, like I said, once you guys get on that soccer field, and 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 let's just pretend that I, you know, said to somebody, you know, you could have got to that ball, or I said you could have got to that ball, and I, you know, I was emotional when I said it, and somebody's response to that was. Well, I don't see you working very hard during our workouts, or I don't see you running sprints as fast as you can, or giving your best effort in practice. I deserve that kind of reply, if I really have it. So everything associated with earning the right, working hard in practice, okay? All that, write all that stuff down, okay? Because next year, whether it's here, or whether it's another school, this is the stuff that you got to keep in mind whenever you guys go and play somewhere. Earning the right to be able to hold people accountable.
running you something? Pick a good scribe, somebody who can write neatly so everybody can read it.
Here's a marker. Marker. Man, right at that. Yeah, what? Here, buddy. Good. I got one. Goodbye, away. Oh, my. Goodbye, you. Go <laughs> team. You, you, might, you might be the right spawn. Oh, you you want to have enough space, all right? So you call leave, yourself leave it all on the field. I'll put that down. Whoa.
okay? So there should be some sort of vested interest. So everybody should actually, the reality is, you guys are depending on each other to be successful and to accomplish some things. And I'm gonna show you guys here something in a second that I did over at Mesa in terms of team goals and stuff like that, okay? So this is the direction that we're going. The right attitude and being able to lead by example, to be able to back up what you say, okay? What is, what is the right attitude? Someone is willing to do whatever for your team. Whatever for the team. Someone is willing to do whatever for the team. And I heard somebody say positive, right? Okay. One of the things, guys, let me, let me give you guys a little factoid or a statistic or whatever you want to call it. You guys heard of something called internal dialogue? Uh, Talking to yourself. Talking to yourself. Okay. It's a fancy way for people to say, I talk to myself. All right? Everybody talks to themselves. Everybody has internal dialogue. Okay? Have you ever <laughs> said to yourself, that was stupid. What the hell was I thinking? Probably the better question is, is there anybody that hasn't done that? Lately? <laughs> Period. Could it be lately? Lately, I thought I was. <laughs> Alright? Listen, man. Do you guys realize that you guys process, and I, and I can't, I don't have the numbers exactly right. You guys process about 1,300 words a minute in your mind, or maybe an hour or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I have it. I have this book. The book, the name of the book is called You Are What You Think. The, 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 um, the uh, premise, if you will, behind You Are What You Think is we, we constantly have an internal dialogue. What you think, because of the internal dialogue that you're having with yourself, what you're thinking about yourself, that's who you are. And so because we process so many words per minute or per hour, I want to say it's per minute. I really think it's per minute. 1,300 words. Yeah. Because our thoughts, I mean, just imagine what a computer does. When a computer loads up, human beings are the most complex designed, is the most complex thing that's ever been designed, known to man. Scientists are still trying to figure out all the capabilities that a human has. Okay? Now, when you think about a computer and how much a computer processes and the process that can, that can happen with the computer, they said that the, the human mind, the brain, is more powerful than like a million computers or something like that. Its ability, some of the things that it's able to do. And, and I picked a million because I want to really say that it's a billion. But like some of the computers, like to be, um, I can't remember, I hate saying things the wrong way. But I, I, it's something along the lines of like in New York City or something like that, the, all the, the, the things that, that, that run New York City and the help it run, the actual, the human mind has, is, 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 is more capable than everything that runs New York City. Capable. We don't do it, but capable. Okay? So for us to, to process 1,300 words a minute is nothing. Honestly, it's just not a big We only use like one third of our brain or something like that. So yeah, yeah, one, a third, maybe even less than that. But the point that I really want to make and I really want to emphasize for you guys is, and this is, this is really important, is imagine us processing 1,300 thoughts a minute of that 1,300, take a stab at how many, how, how much of that is negative. What percentage of, of the 1,300 is negative? 50%? 30. 30%? 29. 29%? 29. 28. 28%? Anybody else? Uh, probably 60%. 60%? Probably oh, not. Wait, 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 wait. Is that 40? 40%? Well, what do you mean negative? Negative, like, I'm stupid, I'm, I'm an idiot. It's probably low because it's a number thing. People don't, you would think of yourself as big, you know, like, 
like big in size. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For some people. Huh? I'm saying is there like a number? Yeah, there is. Like 80, 90 percent. So you have a number. Yeah, I do. Around there. I. 80, 90 percent. Yeah. You get a kid. I don't think it's low. I think it's higher. I think it's higher. Yeah. Anybody want Anybody else? Uh, definitely. Go on once. Go on twice. So it's about it's about 75 to 80 percent. Most people, on, on average, on average, most people. That's the recording. 75 to 80 percent of our thoughts are negative. Okay. Huh? Like worrying. Whatever. Whether it be worrying, whether it be um, they did something that they have no business doing, whether it be them not having confidence in themselves, whatever, whatever. Okay. So when we talk about um, the right attitude and, and, and positive is what you said is how I ended up on this. <laughs> Understand the importance of when you hold somebody accountable, how it needs to be positive. How you have to encourage somebody because if, if, if 75 to 80 percent of our of our internal dialogue is negative, does somebody really need more negativity coming at them? Not really. Not really. Okay. So, how about instead of saying something like that? What if you say, I know you can do better than that. I know you can offer, I know you can give a better effort. I know you can play better than that. So when you do give that feedback, when you do give that accountability, do it in a positive manner. Because 75 to 80 percent, have you guys heard this statement or phrase before? Soccer is 90 percent Mental and 10% physical. Have you guys heard something like that before? Yes. Okay. So if it's if it's 90% mental, that's the kind of feedback that they're going to need. They're going to need that kind of feedback because if you do something to scar someone's ego, confidence, ability in themselves, do you really think that they're going to be able to help you out at that point? Once there's that doubt, not going to have a, not going to be worth a whole lot to you. Not going to be able to give you their best effort if they don't believe in their ability. Okay, so that's why I wanted to touch on that very quickly. Okay, um, looking out for the benefit of the team. Everybody agree with that one? Yeah. Looking out for the benefit of the team. So not being selfish. Is that what is that? Is it safe to say that that's what they? That's what you guys mean, to not be selfish? Part of it. Okay. What's the other part? Um, what about intensity, hard work ethic, 110%, hustle, and let the play do the talking. Everybody agree with that? Okay. Keeping personal things aside, everybody agree with that? So don't take it personal. Okay, you got a goal at hand. Stay focused. Everybody agree with staying focused? Because you guys should have all this stuff written down by the time you guys walk out of here today. If you don't have it, you should have it right now. Um, being able to encourage. Everybody agree with being able to encourage? Being responsible as well as for your own actions. What's that mean? Being responsible as well as for your own actions. What's that mean? Okay. Take responsibility for your actions. Okay? Don't just yell at your teammates, but also take a look at your own performance. Take a look at your own effort more than anything. Forget about your performance. I mean, because guys, seriously, if you guys are playing against a team, and I'm talking they just have a bunch of studs on their team, and you guys end up losing, 
if you guys give your best effort against a team that's just truly, okay, so let me give you guys an example. It's always better to just give examples. <clears throat> I played at a Division II school. We really believed that we could have beat a lot of Division I schools, though. Okay? Most of the Division I schools are going to have players that are super fast and super big. So if you've got a team that's really good, like the team that I played at, but it's a Division II school, but we end up playing, who's the number one team in the nation right now? In football. Auburn. Oregon. Auburn or Oregon. If we would have played Auburn or Oregon, we probably would have got destroyed, honestly, realistically. But if we would have gave our best effort, could we really have been upset that we would have got destroyed by Auburn or Oregon if we really gave our best effort, but they were just a much better team? So effort, man. Effort. I think, I think effort has to be huge. Effort has to be there in practice. I don't know if it's up there, but I think it has to be there in practice. I think it has to be there in the games. Um, I think effort means a lot. It says a lot about you know you guys as a team. If everybody gives their best effort, I think you guys could accomplish a lot. That's that's part of what I was thinking when uh, when I would go hard or go home. Go hard or go home. Absolutely. Putting effort to everything. Absolutely. So the next one. Go hard. You get the through achieve success through change and progression. Is that what that says? Yeah. Okay. When you say through change, what's that mean? I, 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 you know, I wrote that down and I, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> okay. So we'll come back. Accept responsibility is the same as being responsible. That's good. Show respect. Is that up there? Yeah. No, nope. it's not up there. Yeah, it's on the right side. Yeah, yeah, I, I was wondering if you were on that side. So show respect. Um, work hard, give it 110%, which is that's over on that side. Character, courage. Everybody agreeing with this stuff? Character and courage. Respect. And then go hard or go home. So if anybody at any time is not displaying any of the stuff that's up here, everybody has a right, or anybody has a right, to hold somebody accountable if some of this stuff isn't happening, right? Right? Good. Okay. Let me show you guys something real quick. Before I, before I do that, I gotta talk about this. We talked about it a little bit, um, a couple of last week. When I talk about Earning the right, it's the same way in, in friendships outside of soccer. Um, earn, you got to earn the right and earn, and, and earn people's respect. You guys got to really start taking the time to really get to know each other better. Um, we, we talked about it a little bit last week. You guys should know like how many siblings each other has. Um, you guys should know your, your, you know, like people that I'm like really friends with, I literally know my friend's parents' names, like their first and last name. Um, I know how many siblings they have. I know where they're from. I know what, what, what faith or what religion they are. Um, I know all those things because I genuinely care enough about them to know. I was with the young man who I said I, um, I was talking to my coaches about on the phone today. I took him up to uh, up to ASU yesterday to visit ASU. Okay. When I took him up to ASU, he was getting some text messages from from somebody, and he was like, "This girl asked me what my interests are and what my favorite color is. I've never had a girl ask me that." talking to the wrong girls there. That right there, fellas, when, when, when people really take the time to ask you those sorts of things, and really take the time to, to, to do some extra, to, to explore, 
and really get to understand you. That's what it, that's what it's about, man. Mm -hmm. Understanding what people's interests are, what their favorite this is or their favorite that is, when their birthday is. Being sure to make sure that you wish somebody, not because you want to go out and drink with them, but because you really want to celebrate.